And without further ado, guys, I don't want to keep talking over the food. The table is set. The meal is prepared. I'm hungry. You're hungry. So let's dig in. Listen, guys, lately, the last couple weeks, we've been talking a lot about prayer and the importance of prayer. And sometimes when we talk about prayer in any capacity, you know, it, it kind of sounds redundant. But when we look at our lives and when we be honest with ourselves, sometimes, you know, things can get hectic, life can get busy and we can forget to pray. We can forget to read our word. You know, um, we do everything else, but we don't do that, you know, and that's why it's very important that we have these conversations on a regular basis about prayer, about the word, fasting, whatever it is that we need to do to keep us rooted and grounded in God, abiding in him, focused on him and things of that nature. And I kind of wanted to stay right where we've been the last couple of weeks. I want to just come from a brother of ours perspective in the scriptures that I think in this particular scripture, if anybody should have talked about this, it should have been him because he lived through what he is talking about here. And he had his struggles with, you know, praying or supposed to be praying at times where he found himself not praying and sleeping. And I'm already giving it away who it, who it is. And, you know, Jesus having to, to talk to him and question him and the other disciples. But we're going to take it. Our meal today is going to come from first Peter chapter five, and we're going to start in that six verse. And I think Peter is a, is the perfect person to talk to us about what we're going to talk about today. But first Peter five and six says, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may, that he may exalt you in due time. So it says, listen, we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us in due time. In other words, we shouldn't be trying to exalt ourselves or worrying about being exalted or finding a way to be exalted. It says, listen, if we humble ourselves under his mighty hand in due time, he will do the exalting. And that's the only exalting that really matters. And when we look at the definition of exalt is to raise in rank, honor, power, character, quality, or to elevate. So there's so many ways that we can be exalted. It's just not about a position. You know, like I said, it's in power, it's in character, it's in quality, all of these types of things. But verse seven goes on to say casting. Now, as you're humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God and waiting for him to exalt you in one of these places, in one of these areas, verse seven says you should be casting all, all, not some, not a little bit, not you know, the things that I feel I should, it says, no, all casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. What is that scripture telling us? What is that verse saying? It is saying, listen, you should be casting all of these cares upon the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. And if he cares for you, then that means that these things that you are casting upon him, he is going to do something about. But verse eight is what we really, really want to jump into. Peter goes on to say, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now, it doesn't say seeking whom he wants to devour. It says whom he may. And that's why he tells us that, listen, if you are not caught sober or vigilant, this will this is this is giving the devil a possibility to devour you, to take advantage of you. And when we look at the word sober here, a lot of times the first thing that pops in our mind is not drinking or not being drunk or not being high and sober. Yes, that that are those are definitions of the word sober. But here he's going deeper than just about being drunk or being high. Listen to what the word sober here means. It means marked by seriousness, showing self control. The word vigilant means to be watchful. 
Watch this. Wide awake, sleepless. And why is this so important that he's saying this? Because we know what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus told him, listen, you guys need to be watching and you need to be praying. And guess what? They could not stay awake and pray for one hour with the Lord. So if there was anybody that has the experience to talk to us about being sober and being vigilant. It is Peter. And remember, he was not able to pray like he was supposed to. And look what ended up happening to him. He ended up backsliding. He ended up going back to his old life, going back to natural fishing when Jesus had taught him how to spiritually fish, how to catch men. And guess what? Jesus had to go and get Peter and bring him back into the fold. And that's just the grace of God. But he knows exactly what he's talking about here because he lived it. So vigilant means to be watchful, wide awake, sleepless, keenly alert, to or heedful so it says keenly alert to or heedful of trouble or danger as while others are sleeping or unsuspicious and the reason why i think this falls right in line with what we're talking about is first of all we know that the situation that happened with peter was a situation where he could not pray one hour with the lord the lord said listen we need to be on point right now and that's why i wanted to talk to you guys on this week from this scripture because i'm telling you guys there's a lot going on in this world and if there is ever a time you need to be on point that you need to be sober marked by seriousness showing self-control not all loosey-goosey out here and walking with your head in the clouds being vigilant being watchful wide awake not asleep like many people are asleep because there's a lot of things going on out here there's a lot of talking going on out here there's a lot of things happening a lot of situations where people are putting you know people in power putting certain people against another people things that have nothing to do with god but if you are not watching if you are not vigilant if you are not allowing the spirit to you know cause you to tune in and listen to the things that are being said online being said on tv being said by friends being said by family all in the name of money all in the name of the virus or the vaccine or politics like all of these things that's going on in the world there's a lot of talk going on and i grew up where a lot of people did a lot of double talking so i know what it is to see you know i know what it is when people are doing a lot of double talking and they're talking out two sides of their neck and if you are not careful and if you do not catch what a lot of these people are doing in this day and time you are going to be swept away just like Peter was. You're going to be caught up, swept away because you haven't been praying. You're not paying attention to what's being said. You don't understand how people are manipulating you in whatever way that they desire to manipulate you. And this goes on in the church. Like I said, this goes on in politics. This goes on on your job. This goes on, on in your family. Like we are always supposed to be watchful wide awake always praying always asking the lord what must i do in this situation what should i take in as gospel and what should i throw out as garbage because i'm telling you guys if there is any time that you need to be serious about your salvation in the lord and about your life it is now it's always been this way but i'm telling you the stuff that's going on that you can visually see it has nothing on what is happening behind the scenes. Listen, let me tell you something. The Bible is very, very, very clear that this world, this world system, that Satan is the God of the system. And guess what the Bible says the devil is? He is the father of lies. So if he is the God of this world system, don't expect a whole lot of truth, if any, to come out of the system. And that's why God says, listen, you have to keep your focus on me. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge me in all of your ways. Just like it said to us here in verse 7, 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon me. That's what God says. Listen, acknowledge me in all your ways. Every care that you have, every problem that you have, cast it on me. Give it to me. Let me work this out for you. Let me lead and guide you in the way that you should go. Stop listening to everybody else but me. And I'm telling you, this is what is going on right now. 
people are doing more watching TV, more watching TikTok videos, more watching YouTube and people just talking crazy and saying anything. People are not confirming what they're listening to. They're, they, listen, let me calm down because I'm telling you there, there's some dark things going on. And if we are not careful, guys, we're going to fall right in. Listen to me. I've been saying this for years before a lot of this a lot of stuff that we see going on is happening. I always used to say to people, it's sad that we live in a day and time that you almost have to be right there on the scene to believe that what somebody is saying is going on is going on. It is super sad that that's the way life is. And it's been like that for a long time. But now that social media is at an all time high, videos are at an all time high and this and that people are realizing like, man, what do I listen to? What, you know, excuse me, what do I listen to? Who do I trust? And I'm telling you, the only person you can trust right now is the Lord and anybody that is speaking his word anything that's outside of his word opinions and i think or maybe god is no if it's not coming straight from the mouth of god straight from his word you need to be careful because everybody do not have your best interests at heart let's read verse nine and we're going to close here listen to what verse nine goes on to say we'll read eight again and then we'll go right into nine it says be sober be vigilant we already know what those words mean why why do we need to be sober and be vigilant because your adversary the devil the one that second corinthians 4 and 4 says that he is the god of this system right because your adversary he is not our friend the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour and he just can't devour whoever he wants you know I, contrary to popular belief and movies that they put in all these horror movies and all this crazy stuff the devil cannot do whatever he wants he just can't run up on whoever he wants and take them and take advantage of them no he when he sees that they belong to the lord and they are standing strong and i'm getting ahead of myself in the faith he can't just do whatever he wants verse 9 teaches us that whom resist how do we resist them steadfast in the faith the word steadfast is firm fixed settled or established so we need to be firm fixed settled established in the faith this is how we resist them remember the bible says resist the devil and he will flee how do we resist them by our faith by standing firm on our faith another definition of steadfast is not changing or wavering you can't keep changing how you feel or how you believe in the lord you can't keep wavering in your faith either you down with jesus and you believe him a hundred percent or you don't if anybody can put out a documentary or video and it makes you second guess what you believe all this long then you are not a hundred percent committed to the lord and you need to get more word in you you need to pray more to the lord to build a strong foundation in him because if you think this is something with what we're seeing right now all this confusion that's going on it is more to come and if you are not planted and rooted and grounded in the lord you will be taken by every wind and doctrine every speech every tiktok video every youtube video every video that comes along and says look jesus is over here or look jesus isn't real or look we got the answer you thought jesus had it i'm telling you it's going to take advantage of you and it's going to take you right down that river where everybody that's in the world that don't have a relationship with Jesus, don't believe in Jesus, is on their way too. But let's finish out this verse. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing, this is the key, we have to know that the same afflictions are accomplished. That word accomplished means done in your brethren. These same afflictions are done in your brethren that are in the world. This is why I love the Bible because to me, reading it from from the beginning to the end over the years multiple times and just reading the scriptures one thing i've learned about the bible is it covers any and everything that we ever see in life why does it tell us knowing that the same afflictions are accomplishing your brethren that are in the world why is it telling us that because as human beings we 
have a problem with getting in situations i've been near you've been near to acting like we are the only people in the world dealing with this particular situation and the scriptures is like no life is like no you are not the only one going through this going through this there are many others that is dealing with the same situation so don't act like you are the only one going through this. You need to know. It says you have to know. You have to be sure within yourself and understand that you are not the only one going through this. And if you stand firm in your faith, you are going to make it through. Remember, that is the problem that Elijah had. Remember, he tried to say to the Lord, listen, I'm the only one holding it down. And God said, listen, I got 7,000 other reserved to myself that have not bow to Baal or kiss the mouth of Baal. You're not the only one. You have to understand you're not the only one going through this and dealing with this and that I'm expecting to hold the fort down and not compromise. I'm expecting this of everyone. I got others that's doing the same thing. I know I sound real passionate it is because it, it is because I am. I see a lot going on, guys. I see a lot of people doing stuff all in the name of I care about you. I love you. I want you safe. I I, I want the, the best for you. I want all the money you can possibly have. And if you really just sit and listen to these individuals, whether they're in church, whether they're in government, whether they're in politics, whether they're on your job, if you sit and let them talk long enough, something does not seem right. It's not everybody. But listen, there's a high percentage of people that it's going down, guys. That's all I can say. And nobody is going to be able to get any of us through this. But God and his son, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. So know that I love you guys. I pray that this meal was a, not only a blessing to you, but nourishment to you. I, I care so much about you guys, but I try to, you know, and, and sometimes I may sound like a broken record saying it to you guys. I try to remind you, don't forget where you are. Don't forget you are in a dying world that is not going to get better no matter what nobody does. That's why when you go to Revelation, that's why God said, I have created the new Jerusalem. I have created something new that is going to be here after this old place is destroyed. Why? Because it is sick. It is on hospice and it is dying. And that's why you can't go back no matter how old you are in your life and find one time when the world has gotten better morally or spiritually. Yes, you might can go back and find some years that you made some extra money and education system was good, money was good, it's not, but you cannot go back in your life and find one time where it seemed like for years at a time that life had got better. Killing has slowed down. Uh, child abduction has slowed down. Sickness slowed down. None of that. Why? Because the world is passing away and is not going to get better. And that is not a doom and gloom message. That is actually a glorious message because it confirms that everything the scriptures told us is true. But know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.